This is Easton. He was walking in the forest. Unfortunately, he got lost. It was cold since it was winter. After wandering around for a while, Easton saw three roads. All of them seemed dangerous. If the guy took the road leading to the left, he'd have to go through the area where a pack of hungry wolves lived. If he went straight ahead, he'd go through a place inhabited by huge brown bears. The right road would lead him to a lake covered with thin ice. Which way should Easton choose? He should pick the road leading straight ahead. The brown bears living there won't be dangerous. It's winter, and these animals sleep during this season. Serena went to the spookiest house in the neighborhood on her own. That definitely was a mistake. Once she got inside, the door got locked behind her. Now she had three ways out. Behind the first door, there was a zombie. Behind the second door, there was a vampire. Behind the third door, there was an angry ghost. Ooh, Which way is the safest? Serena should choose the third door. Ghosts may be spooky, but they can't cause any real harm. Serena told her friends about her adventures and, of course, they didn't believe her. So the next night, one of them, Rylan, decided to go to the house too. Once he walked in, the door behind him got locked. And again, there were three ways out. But this time, behind the first door, there was a huge magnifying glass. It used the light from the sun to burn anyone and anything that was inside. Behind the second door, there was a huge dragon that disliked strangers. And behind the third door, there was a hungry lion. Which way should Ryland choose to survive? Luckily for him, it's night. There's no sun, so the magnifying glass won't cause any harm. The first door is the safest choice. Archer was going to throw a birthday party. He invited all his friends. But that was also the day when he found out that one of them was an alien. Can you tell who? It's Alex. Look, both of his shoes are left one. Eh, that's weird. In a parallel universe, it's only allowed to have fun and eat sweets. Studying is against the law. Mrs. Noslo came home after a party in a club and asked her daughters about their day. Eve said she had been playing computer games all day long. Anna said she'd invited her friends over. They made a huge pizza and ate it together. Hannah said she hadn't even left her bed. She was watching YouTube videos. In reality, one of the girls was secretly studying. Ooh. Anna, look at her hands. There are some ink stains. If she had been watching YouTube, she wouldn't have used a pen. Karina was going to become a historian. After classes, she liked to go to the History Museum to read her books and learn new things. One day, while the girl was studying there, she went to the bathroom, leaving her stuff behind. When she returned, she discovered that her wallet was missing. Noelle said she never paid attention to Karina or her stuff. Tucker said that at that time, he was on the phone with his friend. Lyra said she hadn't stolen anything. Who lied? Tucker. It's prohibited to talk on the phone in the museum. Mrs. Moore had a rule. If her daughters wanted to eat ice cream in the evening, they had to do some housework during the day. On a rainy Tuesday, she came back from work and asked her daughters what they'd done. Charlotte said she'd vacuum cleaned the second floor. Indiana said she'd done the laundry. Polaris said she'd watered the plants in the garden. Who didn't eat ice cream that day? Polaris. She said she'd watered the flowers. But why would she do it if it was raining outside? Detective Callum is on a mission to find a vampire and an elf. 
He knows that the vampire lives in the red house on the left side of the neighborhood. Look closely at this family and find the vampire. It's this guy. He's walking past the mirror, but there's no reflection. Now back to the elf. He lives in the greenhouse on the right side of the neighborhood. Detective Callum has started to watch this building too. Luckily, he has only spotted two people. But who is the elf? It must be this guy. Look, his ears are pointed. Mr. and Mrs. Mitchell called the police. They said that their son, a private school student, hadn't come back from school. The problem was that he suffered from amnesia. The police started to search the city. They found three teenagers with amnesia who didn't know their names or the names of their parents. And still, they managed to figure out who Mr. and Mrs. Mitchell's son was. Can you understand it? It's the guy in the middle. Mr. and Mrs. Mitchell's son went to school in the morning and didn't return, so he must still be wearing his school uniform. Phoebus crossed the border of two countries every day, riding his bike and wearing a huge backpack. The custom officers checked his bag every day, but couldn't find anything prohibited. And still, they were sure that Phoebus was up to no good. They were actually right, but they couldn't understand what was wrong. Can you figure it out? Look, every time, Phoebus rides a different bike. He smuggles bikes right in front of their noses. Mrs. Adams came back home. She had three children who were grounded and not allowed to watch TV. When she was about to get into the house, she heard that the TV was on. But when she entered, it had already been turned off. Serenity was in the garden. She said she had been redoing her flower bed for the last couple of hours. Cressida was upstairs in her room doing her homework. Everett was in the garage playing the guitar. Who lied? Serenity. No one works in the garden wearing a dress. Also, she's completely clean and doesn't have any garden tools with her. Oliver is terrible at packing. Whenever he goes somewhere, he always takes the stuff he'll never need. Today, he's packing to go camping in the forest. Take a look inside his bag and decide what he won't need on the trip. Look, there's an electric kettle. There's no electricity in the forest, so he can definitely leave it at home. Now, look at what Oliver has packed for a weekend at his parents' house. What things won't he need? There are two huge towels. I'm pretty sure his parents have spare towels. He can leave them at home. Oliver is going on vacation to a deserted island. He will spend a couple of days there, trying to survive on his own. What things won't he need on the island? Oh boy, don't take this laptop with you. It'll run out of power really fast. Susie was finally going on vacation, and she was planning to spend it in Mexico. She lived alone, so she asked her friend to look after her plants and her cat. The friend agreed and took them to her house. When Susie returned, she realized that someone had been in her house while she had been away. How did Susie understand it? Susie lives alone, but look, several packages were delivered while she was away. And somehow, they are inside, not outside the house. Elijah got into a road accident. He crashed into a tree. He smashed his car and got several bruises himself. He didn't break any rules, and still, when the police arrived, 
they noticed one small detail and took his driver's license away. Why? Elijah is wearing glasses. He's got a couple of cuts on his face, but his glasses aren't broken, even a bit. The police suspected that even though the guy had poor eyesight, he wasn't wearing his glasses while driving. He must have put them on only after the accident. Sebastian was a famous archaeologist who dedicated his life to finding the treasures of ancient civilizations. One day, he found a chest full of golden coins in a cave. They dated back to 2000 BCE. For some reason, Sebastian was terribly disappointed with this discovery. Why? The coins were fake. Back in 2000 BCE, people didn't know they were living in the era before the current one, so they couldn't possibly have engraved this date on their coins. Nice catch. On Monday, Ava got into a car accident. She got a concussion and broke her leg. Still, the very next day, her colleagues saw her riding a bike, and she looked perfectly fine. How is it possible? Look, the girl who got in the car accident has a tattoo on her ankle. The girl on the bike doesn't have one. The girl on the bike is Ava's twin sister. Elio is a student living alone in his college dorm room. One Friday night, there is a party in the dorm, and everyone from campus was invited. In the middle of the party, Caden found Elio poisoned in his room. A detective arrived for investigation. The three main suspects were Amelia, Giselle, and Max. All of them denied entering Elio's room. Who is guilty? It must be Giselle. Look at the bed. There's an earring. And Giselle is only wearing one earring that looks the same. Looks like she'd been in the room. Ayla stayed after classes to finish a project with her classmates. She left to get some food from the vending machine. But she found that her wallet had been stolen when she returned. She reported it to the police. The students denied stealing anything. The detective carefully looked at them and realized who lied. Who? Ayla. She went to get some food, which means the wallet was with her and no one could possibly steal it from her. A rich lady, Ms. Geneva Bell, was having fun in a club. In the middle of a party, she felt someone stealing her million-dollar diamond necklace, but the person disappeared immediately. She instructed the security not to let anyone out and call the police. When the detective arrived, the security man said he didn't let anyone out, but saw a man sneaking out through the back door. The guard was arrested. Why? Look, there's a huge lock on the back door. No one could leave through that door, so the security man lied. Mrs. Baker was living with her son Robert, who was a college student. She was working every day, and she didn't know that her son was skipping classes. One December morning, as usual, she left for work. When she returned, she realized that her son didn't drive to college, but she knew he had classes that day. How did she find it out? That night was snowfall. When Mrs. Baker left for work, Robert's car was covered in snow. When she returned, it was still covered in snow. If Robert had driven to college, he would have cleaned the car. Or at least the windshield. Esme was having a walk in a forest. In the evening, she headed home. There was one path that would take her home, but she took the other one leading to the witch's house. The witch and her grandson, who was staying at his grandma's, welcome Esme. This time, it was Esme's turn to make up a riddle. If they don't solve it, they'll have to give her the cat. I have two classmates who are identical twins. Inez was born in 2003, 
but Betty was born in 2004. How is it possible? They are twins, but they were born on New Year's night. Inez was born right before midnight and Betty right after midnight. Can you tell which one of these men has a rich wife? The one on the left doesn't even have a wedding ring, so I'd say it's the man on the right. Okay, now look at these two. Who do you think has a dog? It's the guy on the left. Look, his shoes are all chewed. Must be his dog's job. Kaylin and Juliet are going to their friend's house to work on a group project. At least, that's what they told their parents. In reality, one of them is going on a date with her secret boyfriend, and she's going to meet him instead. Can you tell who? It's Kaylin. She's dressed too well for a study date, and no one normally wastes red lipstick for a group project. Amanda spent the whole summer in the countryside at her grandparents' house. Finally, she returned to her town, and two of her best friends came to the train station to meet her. Can you tell which one of the guys is secretly in love with her? Well, considering that the one on the left has flowers and candy for her, I'd say he probably likes her. Sydney and Louisa both failed their history test. Their mother grounded them and made them study all weekend. She was occasionally walking in the room to check on them. So she walked in again. Can you tell which teenager wasn't studying? It's Sydney. She's holding the book upside down. She must have grabbed it when she heard her mom walking in to pretend like she was studying. Look at these guys doing some housework. Who's not smart? That's the guy on the right. It's raining, but he's watering the flowers. Mrs. Riviera is a math teacher. She collected her students' homework, made them do a computer test, and started to grade the assignments during the class. She came across two very similar homework sheets and realized that one of the students copied the work of the other. Here are the students, Asher and Holden. Can you tell which one of them is the copycat? It's Asher. His hands are covered in fresh ink, which means he probably just did his homework right before the class. Mr. Reed came back home at night after another long shift. His wife was still up. He kissed her and went to bed. Mrs. Reed had been suspecting that her husband was cheating on her for a while already, and this time she wanted to know for sure. She decided to check his pockets. The next day, she told her husband that she knew he was cheating on her. Why? Look, there is a pair of keys in his pocket. His keys are hanging on the wall. So these are the keys from someone else's house. Ashley had a birthday party, and she invited some friends over. Liliana didn't want to go, so she lied that her mom grounded her and made her clean the room. Ashley was sad but understanding about it. To make it up to her, the next day, Liliana invited Ashley to her house to study together and to watch a movie in the evening. Ashley agreed, but at Liliana's house, she understood that she had lied to her. How? Liliana's room is still messy. If she had cleaned it the previous day, it'd be neat. A famous rich writer was living alone in a mansion and never went outside. 
The only people she ever saw were her cook, her gardener, and a cleaning man. One morning, before breakfast, the cleaning man found her poisoned in her room and called the police. The three of them were suspects. The cook was watching a cooking blog on YouTube. The cleaning man said he just came to start the job when he found the lady. The gardener was in the garden planting some flowers. Who poisoned the lady? It must be the cook. It happened right before breakfast, but he wasn't cooking anything. He knew the breakfast wouldn't be needed that morning. It was summer break, and Ariana's friends invited her to go camping. Ariana wasn't really into camping, but didn't want to admit that she'd rather stay at home and watch TV. So, she said that her parents invited her to go to Greece. In reality, she stayed at home and was binge-watching TV shows. Her family sent her a vacation photo. Ariana photoshopped herself there and sent it to her friends. When her friends saw the picture, they realized that Ariana wasn't in Greece. How? Ariana photoshopped herself, but her friends noticed that everyone in the picture except for her cast a shadow. Kelly works at a gas station in a city suburb. It was calm and quiet there. One day, she only had three customers. The first one got something to drink. The second one got some chocolate bars. And the third one just paid for gas. One of them was a criminal, and Hallie reported him to the police. Who is the criminal, and how did she understand it? The second man paid with a $25 bill. Such a bill doesn't exist, which means he'd been printing money. It was September 17th, and Annika was finally going to Spain for her vacation. She was living alone, so she sent all of her plants and her cat to her friend's house. On September 27th, she came back home. When she walked in, she realized that someone was in her house while she was away. How did Annika understand it? Annika lived alone, but look, there's a tear-off calendar hanging on the wall. When she left, it was September 17th, but now it shows September 27th. This story happened a couple of centuries ago. Henry and Caroline were dating, but their families were against it. One day, Caroline's family decided to take her away to another city, but they didn't tell her which one. Henry and Caroline knew it was one of the two big cities nearby. Paris, which was on the left, or Berlin on the right. They agreed that Caroline would throw her scarf away when the train took off, and Henry would find her wherever she was. So here's where Henry found the scarf. Which way did the train go? If you throw something from a moving train, it flies in the opposite direction. Henry found the scarf on the right part of the train station, which means the train headed left to Paris. Spoiler! A couple of months later, he found Caroline there, and they lived happily ever after. The evening before his girlfriend's birthday, Kevin arrived at her office quite late to decorate her desk. He pretended to be a pizza delivery guy to get past the security. But when Kevin finished with the decorations, he realized that the building had already been closed and all the guards had left. Kevin found a locker with several tangled wires. Help the guy out. If he just opens the door, the alarm will go off and the police will arrive immediately. One wire turns off the alarm, another is responsible for fire detectors, and the third one turns off the cameras. Which wire should Kevin cut? The green one. Can you figure out what animal is hiding behind this pattern? That's right, it's a dog. 
Now, let's make this task a bit more complicated. What animal is hiding here? That's right, it's a panda. Police officers are chasing a thief who has just robbed a jewelry store. But he has managed to hide in a women's clothing store and put on a female outfit. Help the officers identify the robber among these women. This elegant lady on the right is wearing the same sneakers as the thief did during his escape. Look at this picture. Can you see any animal? It's a crocodile. Great job. Eric got caught in the rain and decided to hide in an abandoned house. But as soon as he stepped inside, the front door disappeared. A mysterious voice said, The only way to get out of here is to push open one of these doors. But the first door is covered with dangerous acid. The second door is unbearably hot. If he touches the third door, he'll get an electric shock. Which door should Eric choose? The guy needs to take off his rubber boots and put them on his hands. Then he can push the third door. Rubber will protect him from electricity. There are many different animals in this picture. But can you spot identical pairs? This couple of birds, these hares, and the owls. Other creatures don't have identical twins. Look at this picture very attentively. What do you see? Is it a spiral or several concentric circles? These are black and white concentric circles. You probably saw a spiral, but this is just an optical illusion. Try to squint your eyes or move your finger around any of the circles. Daniel came home after work and realized his house had been burgled. The police suggested that the robbery probably took place around lunchtime. The officers questioned four ladies who lived next door. All of them told the police that they had had a road trip together. They had to stop to change a flat tire on their way back from another city, so they got home late at night. But then, the police officer decided to interrogate the ladies separately in different rooms. They heard their answers and arrested them immediately. What question did the officers ask? The women said they had to deal with a flat tire on their way home. When the officers questioned each of them separately, they asked each lady which tire had been damaged, and their answers didn't match. Supermarket manager Mike was counting daily revenue late at night. Suddenly, the fluorescent lamp above his head began to blink. Mike climbed on a chair to fix it. But when he touched the lamp, he burned his hand, fell from the chair, and lost consciousness for a while. When he came around, the guy noticed that all the money had been stolen. He called the police and told them his story. But when a police officer arrived, he arrested Mike. Why? Unlike other light bulbs, fluorescent lamps don't heat up. Mike couldn't burn his hand. This means he's lying. Let's test your spatial reasoning. Look at this pyramid. Can you figure out how it looks from above? The third option is correct. What about this figure? Yeah. 
The second image is the correct one. Now look at this colorful cube. How does it look from above? The fourth variant is correct. Jennifer worked as a manager in a large supermarket. One morning, she received a strange text message. There's a thief among your customers. Beware. Jennifer ran out of her office and saw three people who looked suspicious. Can you find a thief among them? It's this guy. If his arm was really broken, he wouldn't be able to carry a basket. Take a look at this pattern. Can you find two identical butterflies? They're over there. Relax and take a look at these pictures. Choose the lighthouse you like most. This simple test will help you discover some of your curious personality traits. If you've chosen the first lighthouse, you're an optimist and a very strong-willed person with a warrior mindset. You manifest your best qualities during hard times. You have both confidence and power and generously share your light with those around you. The second choice is the choice of warm and lighthearted individuals. People feel comfortable and safe around you. You're so cute that it's simply impossible to stay angry at you. You overcome difficulties using the power of love. You believe in yourself and in other people, and they feel your support even from a distance. If you've picked the third lighthouse, you're a very grounded and practical person. You rely on your own strength and prefer hard and honest work. But keep in mind that asking for help is not a crime. And if you like the fourth lighthouse, you're a very passionate and creative person. Your emotional intelligence is exceptionally high. Sometimes the world around you can make you feel overwhelmed. Expressing your emotions through journaling and art will help you reach inner balance. Can you find two similar dogs? Here they are. Take a look at these pictures and choose your favorite moon. If you've chosen moon number one, you're a very independent person. You might feel guilty when you ask for help. That's why you prefer solving problems on your own. But does it make you happy and fulfilled? If you've opted for moon number two, you live in the moment and chase joy and adventure. But deep down, you might be suppressing the desire for a stable life. Maybe it's time to admit that you're tired of your lifestyle and accept your true needs. If your choice is number three, you're a natural leader. You're talented, smart, and passionate. Unfortunately, subconsciously, you try to block your desire for freedom and independence. It might help if you ask yourself, what responsibilities really bring me joy? And the fourth option is the choice of a very picky person. You're very smart and loyal, but you're not ready to open your heart to anyone. People might think that you're very vulnerable and shy. Maybe it's time to overcome your trust issues and allow yourself to be loved. This pattern is pretty tricky. Can you spot any numbers? It's 82,175. Can you spot any numbers hidden in these symbols? Yeah. 
That's right, it's 95,738. Rachel was lying on the bank of a mountain river. Suddenly, a stranger ran up to her and grabbed her bag. Then he jumped into the water and disappeared. Rachel couldn't swim, so she called a police officer. When Rachel finished telling her story, the thief was already on the other side of the river. But the officer called Rachel a liar. Why? Mountain rivers are very fast. The stream would have carried the thief much further down the river. Look at this picture very attentively and find two identical giraffes. Here they are. Can you find the correct shadow? It's over there. Look at these pictures very attentively. Can you spot five differences? Their gloves are different, as well as their skates. The snowman on the left doesn't have a pom-pom on its hat. Their scarves have a bit different patterns. And finally, the snowman on the left has two buttons, while the guy on the right only has one. A dangerous criminal ran away from the police. The detective saw him enter a scientific research center and followed him. They found only three people inside the building. All three claim to be scientists working on a secret research project. Look at these people. Can you figure out which one is the criminal? Each of these scientists has a badge with a photo on their lab coat. And only this guy's photo doesn't match his face. So he's probably the criminal. A strange accident happened during the Olympic Games. Unknown sources claimed that instead of a real athlete, one of the countries had sent a robot to the running competition. Take a look at these two athletes' shoe prints. Can you figure out which prints belong to a robot? The third runner is the robot. Only his footsteps are perfectly symmetrical. This brief personality test will help reveal your current mood. Take a look at these pictures. Choose the one which attracts you most of all. If you've chosen the first one, you're probably trying to reach a compromise in a difficult situation. No worries. Your diplomatic skills and big heart will help you bring back peace. If you've picked the second road, you're craving adventure and intense emotions. Trying new hobbies and unusual activities will help you bring bright colors to your life. If you like the third route, you're probably a sensitive and romantic person, craving for a happy and loving relationship. Make sure you've set healthy boundaries and remember to love yourself first. And if you've chosen the fourth road, you're probably overwhelmed with stress and obligations. Meanwhile, your true nature is asking for comfort, solitude, and relaxation. There are three students, Peter, Everett, and Leah. One of them isn't a real person. Can you tell who? It's Everett. He doesn't cast a shadow. Look at three friends. Ariel Vandenberg, Danica Hall, and Simone. The first girl has a long one, the second girl has a short one, and the third girl doesn't use hers. What is it? It's their last names. Juniper loves sleeping. She sleeps 10 hours every day. 
Still, there's one month when she sleeps in total a bit less than during the other months. What is this month, and why does this girl sleep less? It's February. There are just 28 or 29 days in this month, which means fewer nights. Andy and Carter went camping in the woods on the weekend. One week later, Andy came to the police. He said Carter had led him deep into the forest, and while Andy was sleeping, his friend left him there. Then Andy had to wander alone for a week until he found some road leading to civilization. He came to the police to report the accident immediately. Carter denied doing that, claiming that they had come back home together. Who's lying? Andy is too clean-shaven for a person who has just got out of the woods. I'll bet he made up his story. Esme was walking in the forest. Once it got dark, she headed home but got lost. She was wandering around the forest until she found the witch's house. She came in, said hi to the witch and her grandson, who was still staying with his granny, and petted the cat. The witch had another riddle for Esme to solve if she wanted to get out. She wrote down a number. There were two special things about it. What were they? First, this number contains all existing digits. Second, they're put in alphabetical order. Mrs. Cooper was going to the bank when she passed out. Cece was passing by when she noticed the woman on the ground. She called the ambulance and the police. Soon, the woman came to her senses. But she found out that someone had stolen all her money. There were three suspects, Cece and two other pedestrians, Teo and Mason. Who is the thief? Look, there are two types of footsteps leading to the place where Mrs. Cooper is lying. One of them belongs to her, and the other was left by Cece. There are also two parallel straight lines, which must be the prints left by a wheelchair. So, the thief must be the man in the wheelchair, Mason. Mrs. Ford reported to the police that her neighbor, Anthony, had stolen her golden figurine. She said, I was upstairs vacuum cleaning when I heard someone enter the house. I walked up to the window and saw my neighbor leaving the house a half minute later. When I went downstairs, I saw that my golden figurine had been stolen. Anthony denied passing by Mrs. Ford's house that day. Who should the detective believe? He should believe Anthony. Vacuum cleaners are noisy, so Mrs. Ford couldn't possibly hear anyone enter her house. Cheryl was having a birthday party. She noticed that her brother was staying in his room with some girl, but she didn't know who it was. Cheryl got curious, so after they left, she sneaked into his room to look for some hints. There were three girls at the party, Jasmine, Willow, and Sylvia. Cheryl immediately guessed who her brother was dating. Can you figure it out? It's Sylvia. Look, there's a jacket in the room. Sylvia was wearing it at the party. Now I'll show you some pictures, and you'll need to understand what's wrong with them. Let's go! Here's the first one. The door hinges and the handle are on the same side of the door. Doors don't work this way. Here's another one. What's wrong here? The woman isn't wearing a necklace, but it's reflected in the mirror. And what about this one? Nine and eleven are messed up. It should be the other way around. Ah, this one should be easy, but keep your eyes wide open. Right, there's no red traffic light. Paris went on an expedition to a desert for a month. She didn't have a strong internet connection, so she couldn't talk to her boyfriend often. Still, one day, she managed to video call him. But that call didn't end well. The girl broke up with a guy. Why? Look at the background. 
It's nighttime for Paris' boyfriend, but he is obviously having dinner with some girl. There's a second plate and a glass with a lipstick print on it. Storm was walking with his friend in the park. Suddenly, it started raining, and they had to go home. Storm ran back as fast as he could because he didn't have a raincoat, an umbrella, or even a hood. Still, when he finally got home after running in the rain for 10 minutes, not a single hair on his head was wet. How is it possible? Storm was bald. Man. In an alternate reality, Mrs. Savad was trying to persuade her daughter, Amy, to go to a party. Amy wanted to do her homework instead. Weird, huh? Mrs. Savad bought Amy an amazing dress, but the girl still refused. It continued until her mom promised that if Amy went to that party, she'd let her do her homework 16 hours a day every day for another month. Later, Mrs. Savad left for her own party. When she returned, she realized that Amy hadn't left the house. How did she know? There's still a price tag on the dress, which means that Amy didn't wear it. Violet had a genius but crazy sister who was always making traps in the basement. One day, Violet went downstairs to get her laundry. As soon as she walked in, the door got locked and wouldn't open. There were three buttons. Violet knew that one of them would open the door, but the other two would electrocute her. Luckily, her sister had mercy. There was a hint. Which of the buttons will let Violet get out of the basement? If you put the letters in the right order, you'll see purple button written there. That's the one. Mrs. West came to the police station asking to check on her husband. She said that he was in his office when she called him. Suddenly, she heard her husband fall to the floor. And about 10 seconds later, he hung up without saying anything. She called him again, then she came to his office, but he didn't open the door. The detective arrived at the office and found Mr. West unconscious. The detective was sure that the man wasn't alone in the room when it all happened. Why? someone had to hang up the phone. If the man had suddenly fainted, the phone would have fallen on the floor. You work in a baggage storage room at the airport. Three people come and give you their bags at the same time. Now, you don't remember who each bag belongs to. Take a look inside and try to figure it out. There's just one girl, so the bag with a dress inside probably belongs to her. The blind man doesn't need this mirror, which means that this bag must belong to the bald man. And the bald man doesn't need a hairbrush, so the third bag must belong to the blind man. Lilibet always wanted to have a cat, but her mom never allowed her to get one. Once, the girl found a kitten in the street and brought it home. She knew her mom would make her take it to the shelter, so she decided to hide the animal. Once Lilibet's mom walked into the girl's room and realized there was a cat living there. How did she know that? Look, the walls and the sofa are scratched at the bottom. Mrs. Jones was working a night shift. Her daughter, Emmeline, wanted a friend to stay with her. But Mrs. Jones didn't allow it because it was a school night. When the woman returned, she realized that Emmeline had still invited her friend over. How did the woman understand it? There's a pair of earrings in the bathroom. Mrs. Jones and Emmeline don't have their ears pierced, so these must belong to someone else. Daphne suspected that her boyfriend, Dashiell, had hacked her phone and was now reading all her messages. One day, Daphne and her friend Sophie decided to go to the park. Daphne invited her boyfriend, too, so he could get to know her friend. When Dashiell arrived, Daphne broke up with him. Why? She didn't tell when they were going to meet, but Dashiell still arrived at the correct time. That's how she made sure he had indeed been checking her messages. Tony and Scarlett are best friends. They wanted to spend the summer together. Unfortunately, Scarlett's grandmother fell sick, and the girl had to go to another city for the whole summer to be with her. Tony missed her friend. 
That's why, from time to time, she walked past her house. In a couple of weeks, Tony realized that Scarlett had lied to her about staying with her grandma. She had been home all that time. How did Tony understand it? Look at the house. One day, the window is open, and the next day, it's already closed. Someone's definitely living there. Mr. York was a rich gentleman living in a mansion. Once, his brother came to visit him. The next day, Mr. York called the police and said that a very expensive golden cup had been stolen from his collection. The only other person in the house was his brother, so he must be the thief. The police didn't believe Mr. York. Why? The spot where the cup was supposed to stand was just as dusty as the rest of the shelf. It means that nothing had been standing there for a long time. And, like always, crime doesn't pay.